So today I want to cover a really common question that I get, which is when should I use a database and when should I use a page in Notion? So when you're creating a new page in Notion, let's just create one here, you'll notice this sort of page here. And as soon as you hit enter, it's going to turn into a page or you have the option of choosing one of these databases over here. So the thing you need to know about Notion is that a page can either be a page or a database. If you choose a database, that's all that you can have on the page. If you choose a page, you can have multiple databases embedded inside of that page. So I typically ask, um, is there a number of different types of information that I'm going to want to have on the same page? If so, I would, I would turn something into a page first. If I know that it's going to be information that I might need to reference in a number of different places, for example, a task database, um, then I would say start with the database. And the beauty is you can start with a database here like this. And you can put your things in there. Um, and then you can change your mind and you can say, let's, um, let's make a page just going to hit enter and that becomes a page now this page over here which is actually a database i can actually move that into the page so you can see um, it's a page right now but if i want to turn that into an inline database i can do that and that allows me to have um, images here if i want um, can upload an image, I can add titles, more text, and even more databases if I want to, and even link to other databases. So that allows you to have multiple pieces of data inside the same page. So again, if you change your mind and you decide you want something to be a page or you want something to be its own database, like again, let's say you change your mind here and maybe you're going to want to reference that database in a number of different places. You can uh, turn that into a page. You can um, drag that into the sidebar and it becomes sort of its own page again. And we can also embed it in here if we'd like to. So then uh, we can click to go to the original database, which is basically here. So you've got pages and databases. So that's sort of a really, really basic overview of how pages and databases work together. Um, I'll give you another an example in my own workspace of different ways that I do this. So I have an areas page and I have a pretty big mix here of pages and databases. So for example, if I go to home projects, some placeholder stuff in here just for fun. Um, but so you can see I've got looking for, so that's a list of things that we might need. House ideas and inspiration, which I've embedded here. Want house projects, greening the house. So I can sort of store all of these creative related ideas into one kind of visual spot. And that works really well for me. To me, having a home projects that was just a database, I don't think would have quite cut it. So this is just one example of how I might use a page that also has databases embedded in it. So again, if you have a database, that's all you can have on the single page. But in an individual page, you can have as many databases as you want, and you can have as many different formats as you want to. So I might um, you know, only show me products or just show me inspiration. You can create, um, you know, a Kanban board or a calendar or a list version of this. So there's so many different ways that you can surface the uh, databases as you wish. So that's a really uh, loose overview of pages. Um, now, for example, projects is something that I do as database entries. 
And part of the reason that I do that too is because there's specific data I would like to store along with my projects. I like to associate each project with different tasks and resources. You can see I've assigned it different weeks and I've got lots of, you know, to do's, things like that, all kind of tucked away and associated with that project. And at any point I can kind of jump in, see that individual item on its own and, um, and actually that's not due yet. Why don't we adjust that? It's more of a, most projects, for example, have a date range. And that way I could also see this in a calendar view if I wanted to, and um, even turn the date properties on here, due date. So you can kind of see them spanning different dates. So there's just often times where I think certain pieces of information need a lot more data, especially if you have sets of data that all kind of need the same characteristics. So for every single project I work on, I like to see the status, I like to see the dates, uh, what are the current tasks associated with that. So for me, that naturally lent itself well to a database. Whereas, let me just add another date here. Um, whereas something like the areas are pretty organic. Um, some of these are databases, some of these are pages. And so I just wanted to make sure that I could have a, a little bit of a mix. Now I could change my mind and I could say that I actually want all of these business things to be in a database. So um, I could actually just create an inline gallery and I could drag these into here. And then all of those would be um, database items, and I'd have these uh, pieces of information at the top, which I can, of course, adjust. So right now there's only a few, but let's say I want to add a property. Maybe I want to add a multi-select or something like that. I can absolutely do that. Um, and so, yeah, I can change my mind. I can, I can move these in here. I can say, actually, no, maybe that works better as a page and I can drag it right back. Same with big initiatives, just move that back. So you're always free to kind of move your data around if you decide that um, you're not certain if the page makes more sense or database makes more sense. I think as you get a real feel for how you can play with your data, it's gonna to start to become a lot quicker and easier for you to figure out whether it needs to be a database or um, a page. Another, another handy thing, of course, when you are using database entries is the ability to have these templates, right? So if I have a corporate client or a project or whatever, um, I can kind of set up some characteristics in advance. So if I open this up, you'll see I kind of have um, status already in there. And then there's these uh, master task databases already embedded in there and that's kind of ready to go. And there's lots of different project templates I could create in there. So um, that's just one thing to, to think about when you're looking at whether to do a database or a page. Um, other things I do here, for example, resources is a page, but it's full of each of these is an individual database. So I have a notes database, reading and listening, studies, swipe, all of these are databases with a number of entries. And then that way I can uh, reference those elsewhere. So for example, if I go to my master notes, I can, let's see, click on one of these. Maybe digital minimalism. And you can see that I've connected that to my reading and listening databases. So uh, that's just another thing to consider is that you can relate databases. So um, you can't necessarily relate a page, although I could actually mention, I could mention a page here like this. So maybe I want to link to my um, house, house plants there. I could do that, but it, uh, it doesn't have the same effect as being able to click directly into related notes. So I can jump into this post here and you can see there's other characteristics in here. So that's a sort of basic overview of databases versus pages and when you might wanna consider using one over the other. Don't be afraid to change your mind and play with the data and don't feel like you have to get it perfect for you to be able to make progress with it.
So good luck and enjoy your databases.